Hello to all my lovely viewers! Welcome to my channel, Lovely Day with Belle Tutorial and Travel. In this video, I'm going to share with you how to accomplish the teacher reflection form objective number 9 for the highly proficient teacher. So if you are a master teacher, then this video is for you. I hope you consider subscribing my channel. Maraming salamat po! Okay, so umpisa na po natin. Teacher reflection form or TRF for master teacher 1 to 4. Directions. Reflect on your attainment of the RPMS objective by answering the questions or prompts provided. Use any local or official language that you are comfortable with. Use extra sheets if needed. Please limit your response to 500 words. Objective for objective number 9. Assisted colleagues to design, adapt, and implement teaching strategies that are responsive to learners with disabilities, giftedness, and talents. And objective number 9, prompt number 1, ito po yung scenario niya. This is the observation notes form accomplished for the observation in the class of teacher Emil. The observer noted that all learners must receive the same activity and no differentiation must be applied for advanced learners. Ito po yung kanyang observation note. Good start of the class. The teacher has a well-modulated voice. Then, why was there a special activity for one student? There must be uniform measure of student success. Therefore, there must be no differentiation in what the students do, even if the teacher claims that his students is advanced in terms of artwork compared to his classmates. Okay, so ito po yung ating sasagutan. Uh, we have two points to answer to the following. Number one, in the context of addressing gifted learners, do you agree with the note of the observer? Then write your reflections in this form. The number two point, based on your reflection, design a learning action cell or lock plan to assist your colleagues in designing, adapting, and implementing teaching strategies for gifted learners. Attach your lock plan. Okay, so, i-attach na po natin ang ating lock plan. Okay, and this is my reflection. Our challenge as educators is to meet the needs of each individual student. Every student needs opportunities to learn, grow, and be challenged to achieve excellence. In the context of addressing gifted learners, I don't agree with the note of the observer as cited in the above example. Okay, so in my own point of view, students with their remarkable qualities, talents, and learning potential, such as the student of teacher Emil, have needs that demand special attention. Perhaps the artwork of this student stood out from the rest of his classmates. And teacher Emil recognized his artistic talent and tried to modify activities in order to challenge his natural skills. That is why teacher Emil provided special activity for that particular student who is advanced in her class. He needs to be challenged in new ways and given the opportunity to explore his innate gift in terms of artwork. He must be provided differentiated activities in which he is interested in and allowing this student to convey his learning in ways that is appropriate for his learning modes and preferences. In fact, all students have individual preferences, strengths, and challenges. Therefore, there is no one-size-fits-all differentiation plan for meeting the needs of gifted students in our class. When possible, Provide more advanced materials for a gifted student. And once the rest of the class is up and running, introduce them to more difficult techniques than the rest of the class is using on the same project. Hence, differentiation in the classroom ensures that students' academic demands are satisfied in the best possible environment. Okay, so... So, nag-research din po ako para po ma supportahan ang aking sagot based on my research from the internet ito po yung aking na research technically all students according to developmental psychologist Abraham Moslow and Howard Gardner are gifted at something but within the realm of what happens in the classroom a teacher can help those superstars shine even brighter by simply adding a few additional strategies to their teaching repertoire this explains in his book, Gifted Children and Gifted Education, a handbook for teachers and parents, that teachers must engage gifted students at different levels according to their needs. This is often an ignored spectrum of differentiation. 
Okay? So, ito naman din po. So, marami pa akong na-research, no? So, gifted students who are served in general education classrooms frequently finish their work sooner than other students. This can happen in one subject area, such as mathematics or in all subject areas. Due to their rapidity of thought, Van Tessel, Basca, and Brown, 2007, they typically finish assignments before other children. Then, they may act out because they are bored. Ano, kailangan natin silang bigyan ng extra work, no? So, in, review, in a review of research on gifted students in the regular classroom, Johnson and Racer, 1996, describe five overall areas for differentiation. Modifying content, allowing for students' preferences, altering the pace of instruction, creating a flexible classroom environment, and using specific instructional strategies. The bulk of the research concentrates on instructional strategies that have been linked to improve student achievement and have been shown to increase critical thinking, problem-solving uh, abilities, and creativity. So the following have been established as effective strategies according to Johnson and Reiser uh, 1996. Posing open-ended, open-ended posing, open-ended questions that require higher level thinking, modeling thinking uh, strategies such as decision-making and evaluation, accepting ideas and suggestions from students and expanding on them, facilitating uh, original and independent problems and solutions, helping students identify rules, principles, and relationships, and taking them to taking time to explain the nature of errors. Therefore, talented children deserve teacher advocates who care about them, understand them, and can recognize in the classroom, as well as options and opportunities outside of the classroom to help them realize at levels corresponding to their ability. So, yan po yung aking reflection form ng objective number 9, prompt 1. Okay po, so, mamaya papakita ko po sa inyo yung lock plan ko. Okay, as promised po, ito na po yung aking learning action cell plan or lock plan for the month of April. Okay, school year 2021-2022. So, meron kami dito nakalagay na pre-implementation, that is planning, no? and then implementation, and then yung post-implementation or the evaluation. Ito na po siya. Ito po yung aming lock plan. Okay, so under activities, ako po yung uh, learning facilitator for this activity. Tapos, syempre, since na-discuss na po natin dito ang guidelines on the implementation of the RPMS for school year 2021-2022 and the code of ethics for professional teachers. So, nagamit ko rin po ito sa aking uh, MOVs. So, syempre, because nabanggit na nga po natin yung guidelines ng RPMS, kasama na rin po dito ang uh, objectives 9 and 10, no? yung may prompt 1 and 2. So, isa po ito sa mga MOVs na nagamit ko. And this supports my R uh, TRF, objective 9, and of course, also to objective number 10. 